The time, let's go out there and enjoy the atmosphere before this uh, big tenant Scottish Cup fourth round tie. It's Adam Midlothian against Dundee United. And to describe it all for us, Billy McNeil and Jock Brown. A welcome to the two teams as they arrive at the start of this crucial match. And a huge welcome from both ends of the ground, I can tell you. Dundee United with a very healthy lineup also. Supporters travelling down from Tayside. And confirmation also once again of the two teams. Hearts have had to make one significant change. Paul Ritchie is suspended. Another change is leaving out John Robertson, who's on the bench, because he's not deemed quite fit enough to play for 90 minutes. Now that formation is the expected starting lineup, but it does lend itself to various alterations easily into a 4-4-2 by dropping back Neil Pointer particularly into the left back spot and pushing forward Gary Law. But that will all depend on how the game unfolds very shortly. The main speedhead though will undoubtedly be Jim Hamilton, the Bells player of the month for January. The scorer of five goals since joining Hearts from Dundee where he scored eight in the early part of the season. Fine young player, another 21 international. Dundee United with that settled, familiar lineup. the big change. Robbie Winters comes back after being rested last week against uh, Hibbs, replacing Gary McSwigan. The three Scandinavians are there, and Eric Pedersen winning six there. Could start in that wide position on the left, but could also be delegated to look after one of the Hearts key players in a man-marking role. But Winters really has flourished this season, just 22 years old and attracting attention all over not only England but Europe now for his flying speed up front and for his goal scoring prowess which has produced eight goals for United this season. The man in charge is Hugh Dallas from Motherwell who handled the cup final last season between Rangers and Hearts. So the anticipation is about to end and reality begins as Hearts start the match in front of a very enthusiastic crowd I can tell you and the opening stages will be vital in terms of settling formations down and establishing some tactical ascendancy here this is going to be very interesting indeed and Neil Poynton operating right in the left there's a free kick immediately there for the challenge by McLaren on Neil McCann McLaren lifts the arms in the usual plea of innocence. An opportunity right away for Hearts. McLaren has to retreat the full 10 yards. Neil Poynton will take this free kick. Weir's in the box. So is McPherson. Some desperate defending there by Dundee United. Appeals hopefully there for handball. United pulling everyone back there to deal with that attack. Now looking to settle. McLaren's headed on, Winters marked closely there by Alan McManus. It looks as though McManus is on Winters and Weir is on Olufsen with McPherson spare. And Pointing, I think, will be on Andy McLaren playing wide on the right. Here's Jamie Dolan. Could head it away by Weir, but he had to concede the corner. It's been a real rousing start. This is a good ball into the middle there. It's long to test the, the Hearts defensive, but well dealt with with David Weir. McLaren with the corner. Presley held off there very well by David Weir. United build again. This is Pedersen. Good movement offered there by Olofsson, but he couldn't control it. Difficult overhead conditions, the wind swirling around the stadium. Shout Olofs has made such a big impact since joining the club from Moss in Norway, although he is Swedish, and he scored nine times for United, the leading goal scorer. Yeah, th this is a typical way that the United play. They pull Olofsson on, on that left-hand side, and they try to feed the ball into him. He's good in there, he scored a goal or two for them, and I think that's a feature we'll see throughout the afternoon. So McManus now dragging the ball away from Winters. Presley steps in. Look at the ball holding up there in the wind. You can tell the nature of the conditions with all these scraps of paper swirling around the stadium. A high challenge by McLaren. 
certainly trying to play the ball, but it was dangerous play. Although well, the referee has not yet, he has now lifted his right arm to indicate indirect. Although well, that really is academic in this position. So once again, Weir and McPherson have gone forward. Poynton's free kick. Dykstra stays in his line this time. The clearance came from Presley. Here's Winters. He's away from Locke. He's very quick indeed. Chased by Salvatore. Fouled by Salvatore. The referee Dallas certainly well up with play. Yeah, Winters' pace is always a problem. He's prepared to run the defenders here. I think Salvatore does really well here. I think he's unforced to be, to, to be, given, to be fouled there because he stayed with the, 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 the runner, made sure he wasn't going to get away with him, and I think did well. I think the flailing left arm was a problem for referee Dallas, who is right up there. This is a chance for Dundee United. Andy McLaren has gone across. Olofsson also has a lot of power in his, in both feet, in fact. Well, the free kick with the right, the rebound with the left, and neither finding the target. Shell also showing his confidence there, though, and insisting on taking the free kick. He really doesn't do anything with his free kick at all, and when he gets the benefit of the rebound, he's never really up to that. And really, I think to score from there would be difficult against a goalkeeper of Rishi's standard. Presley's timing was good, and Hearts have settled into that system at the back. Two markers, McManus on Winters, Weir on Olofsson, McPherson spare, the wing backs pushing forward. Colin Cameron's gonna cross there. They become involved in the build-up. Poynton's cross, a good one. There was a chance on there for Hamilton and now for Fulton. A very good chance for Hearts, two good chances in fact. Disappointment for Jim Jeffries and the Hearts coaching staff. It's been an impressive start by Hearts and this is a good ball into the middle from Poynton. But look at this, a bit careless here from Morris Malpas. And really I think Stevie Fulton will be disappointed that he didn't hit the target. You know, he shunned so well, but look at, look at the delay in Morris Malpas getting rid of that ball. And, Stevie Fulton's got a bit of time to settle himself and I think he snatched at the shot just a little bit. Yeah, it's a very good chance indeed there for Steve Fulton. Norman has such a sweet left foot. Dolan plays it forward, there goes Olofsson, this is awkward. Rousset came to give some help there to Alan McManus. That's good play by Perry. And what other very interesting tactical manoeuvre here is that Jim McInally appears to be operating on Colin Cameron. Andy McLaren is going to be spoken to by referee Dallas. One or two infringements. A calm down. Bit of advice, I think, from referee Dallas. Interesting move that, McInally on Cameron, Billy. It is, well, he's a, a very well-experienced player, Jim McAnally, and obviously Cameron's such an important member of this, this heart team, and he's been singled out for a lot of special attention. An interesting aspect has happened on the other side, you know, where Neil Poynton is putting the pressure on young McLaren because he's prepared to break forward at all and lend his weight to midfield, and McLaren's got no option but to go back there to, to backtrack on him. So the swirling wind at the moment, favouring Hearts. That's a dubious advantage, mind you, in terms of build-up play, but certainly a big advantage in terms of shooting for goal. Here's Pedersen, and shooting that runs out harmlessly, but it wasn't harmless. It's a corner kick. Pedersen disagrees vehemently. I think that... Uh, the linesman was right to give it because I'm sure it came off a the United player there but it's interesting the Hearts are prepared to run at the United at the moment and they're unsettling to a degree McCann's in swing up and a lot of pump 
jumping and barging there on the goalkeeper. David Weir was climbing all over Steve Dykstra there. Well spotted by the referee, but Dykstra was pinned to his line as the ball came in. This wind is making life difficult for the goalkeeper, and really, when you've got a couple of big fellas in front of him like that, then really, I honestly think that Dykstra should have done better there and come and taken it. You know, I, I think he was fortunate to get a foul. Heading on there was by Weir once again. Dolan trying to get to grips, losing out to Salvatore. Hamilton's moved to the right. This is Locke. Inside is Fulton. Now McManus linking from midfield. Point and closed down by McLaren. And Robbie Winters staying with McManus to make the tackle. wasn't read by Poynton, that little manoeuvre from Neil McCann. Well, Tommy McLean has been tinkering already with his formation, adjusting to what Hearts are doing, speed of one or two of his players. Conditions overhead, certainly anything but ideal. The ball really has to be kept in the ground, I think we're going to see good football. Hamilton's pass, that's McCann, he's offside. of anguish from the Hearts supporters. That was a nice, bright little uh, link up there, and perhaps Neil McCann just strayed slightly offside, but, you know, he's got the pace to trouble United at the back, and we get a quality pass or two, he'll do that. Olofsson with his marker, Weir, and we won out on that particular occasion. Malpass was determined and strong, so was Poynton. Likewise, Presley, well, no prisoners has been taken here. This game certainly been played for keeps by both sides. Hearts, though, starting very quickly indeed and looking very impressive. Three men at the back, exchange passes. Here's McManus again. Disappointing pass forward. McManus coming into the side here to replace the suspended Paul Ritchie. Two very promising young defenders here at Town Castle. Side containing only six of the players who played in the cup final starting lineup last May. No sign of John Cahoon, Gary Mackay, John Robertson, Paul Ritchie, or Pasquale Bruno. The hurry clearance by Russe, possession for Dundee United. This is Winters trying to hold off McManus, point and provide some help. Corner kick to Dundee United. Mark Perry and Steve Presley have gone forward. McLaren keeps it low. He'll have another chance here as McManus attacked the ball well with Zetterland. So packed six yard box there. Very difficult for Gilles Rousset. Fired in there by McLaren. Presley battling. That's Pedersen. Well, he's brought a lot of quality to Dundee United, but one thing he hasn't done yet is score a goal in United's colours. It's a chance, really, either to get a ball on target or to play it back in that area, but really, he missed times it entirely, but the wind is going to have a big effect on how the players do today. The header there was by Dolan. Here's McManus. Looking for Jim Hamilton, but a head flick on. Presley was at full stretch. Jim Hamilton coming short. Here's Poynton. That's well taken down by Winters. That's a fine pass by Robbie Winters. Terrific understanding there with Shell Olofsson. Olofsson against McPherson. It's a very good ball in. That needed someone attacking the near post area. Lovely control from Poynton. Well pass with a head up. Jim Hamilton doing well again. The layoff picks out McCann. Cameron comes racing across on the right. Well, that's good play by Malpass. 
Well, a man who's played in five Scottish Cup finals for Dundee United, so full of experience. He also has 55 Scotland caps. McCann against Zetterland. Help from McLaren, now Winters. Trying again to release Olofsson on the run. Weir was much tighter to him that time. Fulton to Weir. Terrific effort by Weir. Touched onto the post by Dykstra. No, the referee's given a goal kick. In other words, Dykstra didn't get a touch. I think this was certainly a corner, but it was a magnificent strike from David Weir. And yes, it, was, it should have been a corner, but... He does so well, a retreating defence, you always go at it, have a, a strike, but magnificent strike and a good save for Dijkstra. He'll be annoyed, he's been denied a, a save. Well, Ravi Dallas, by the pace of the ball, I think, deceived. And Steve Dijkstra will have this difficulty because he's a kind of goalkeeper who will save us all his good saves. But he's slightly disappointed that wasn't credited to him by the referee. Although he still would prefer a goal kick to a corner kick. With the ball driven in there by David Weir like a shell on Dykstra's goal. So a let off, I think, for Under United. No question, though, Billy. Hearts seem to have started better. There's no real sign of Zetterland and Dolan in the Under United midfield. No, they're certainly very much up for this game. And an interesting aspect of how they're playing is that, that uh, Cameron is playing in a much more positive role. Immediately, Hearts get professed, he's prepared to, to push up and become a third man in, in that attack. And as they lose the ball, he just tucks round and picks up a nice position in, in midfield. But Hearts are certainly up for this game. So I'm sure on the bench, Jim Jeffries will be anxious to see some reward for this very bright start to the match. Colin Cameron's header, Malpass controlling things calmly again. That was Presley. Ball's out of play. It's a throw to Dundee United. Well, Neil Pointed really takes every decision to heart, doesn't he? Well, according to plans so far, I think, must be the view of the Hearts coaching staff. All of sin against McPherson. This time the throw goes to Hearts. Presley's header. Here's Dolan. That's a good simple pass to Pedersen. Now Olofsson couldn't gather that. Hamilton's way off into territory occupied here by McCann. McCann going outside Zetterlin. Interesting though to see how quickly Zetterlin gets to McCann when he takes possession in a deeper position. Very experienced player. Lars Zetterlin. Now Poynton. Good turn pass finds Poynton. Ball pass is in the way. It's a good block. Now the counter attack possibility for Dundee United. This is when they can be very dangerous indeed. Olofsson got to that. He really cannot be taken lightly, the big striker. He's deceptively quick. Yeah, David Burton took a lot of gamble there, a lot of chance. It came off on this occasion, but you can often get caught out of doing things like that. Jim McAnally's header. That's Weir towards Cameron. Strong tackle there by Jamie Dolan. He took a bang in the face for his trouble. The referee will allow some treatment. An accidental one without question. You know, once again, it's a, a typical effort by, by Cameron. He's turning around, but he's clearly taken out the plate. I don't think there was anything in that. Uh, purely accidental, but uh, Jamie Dolan, I'm sure, will feel it. An interesting aspect that Hearts are benefiting from 
the element's just a little bit at this moment because the wind seems to be have increased in ferocity and it's moving from, from the Hearts end down towards the United and I think it's helping Hearts at the moment. Some rainfall also, just to add to the misery of the defenders from United facing the ball. That's a good driven ball in. Now that was a decent ball, in fact, just requires someone to have boot on that to deflect it towards goal. It's certainly a shot from a long way out, but really there's got to be a bit of movement in, in the box. There's got to be players trying to go across the, the, the face of the ball, even get a touch to it, or even take the, the goalkeeper's attention away from it, but certainly it, it was there to be touched. Dare I say it, John Robertson territory. Body check there by McInally on lock. Well, miserable February afternoon in the capital. But still, attention focused on the playing surface because there's been some relentless competition and very good play. And down goes Hamilton. The challenge by Malpass. Appeals there for a penalty. Dijkstra throws the ball out to allow treatment for Hamilton. And the hard supporters are furious about this not being a penalty. Again, it's a dangerous ball to me. Look at Jim Halton, he forces himself in the goal side of Morris Malpass. And I've got to be honest with you, I think that uh, United are very lucky not to be facing a penalty, but you know, there's Hamilton, forces himself in, in the goal side of the defender. And Morris Malpass certainly didn't touch the ball there. And there it is from another angle, and I certainly think that was a penalty. Yes, I think uh, that would have been given by many referees, and certainly I think it would have been given on the halfway line, Billy, and that means it's a foul, which means it should have been a penalty. And well, that's right. for Dundee United. But uh, Jim Hamilton did well, because he's not been in the game all that much just now, but when that ball got played in there, he forced himself the goal side defender, made, him, made it difficult to have a, a good tackle on him. Salvatore plays it forward. Pedersen now has the task of looking after Cameron. There's been some adjustment made by Dundee United in view of the position taken up by Cameron. Now pass penalised there by Jim Hamilton. Dolan's going in strongly to take the free kick quickly. Referee Dallas now having to be very alert indeed. Tension running high. Well, it's a, always going to be a competitive game here and you expect players to be, be competitive. I felt Morris Malpass did well because he, he took away any pressure point at all. So Jim McInally still playing on the left-hand side of midfield for Dundee United, but has been released principally, I think, looking after Colin Cameron. Alec Pedersen seems to be taking that task over. A bad ball, that, from Pedersen. Up goes Presley. Now Fulton. McLaren did well. Zetterlund trying the early pass and trying, I think, to hold that up against the breeze. But it is not dependable, though, the wind. It is gusting and dropping and very difficult. There's going to be a hold up here. A Hearts player requires attention. It's Neil Pointing who's gone down. Let's see how this happened. And it's, again, it's a, a very competitive game, and you know players will be competitive. And here it comes. Here you'll see. No, this is the pass forward. We're seeing. We're not seeing the injury at all. Obviously, trying to play that ball in, hoping that the wind will hold it up. But overhit it and made it an easy one for Jules Rousset. And I wonder really if Neil Pointing has twisted here somehow on his own because uh, there's no obvious reason for him going down there. Jim Jeffries looks on anxiously. Pointing is back on his feet. Certainly will not want to lose the service of Pointing Hearts. Tommy McLean in some discussion there with Gordon Wallace. Davy Sinclair, the new United player standing beside Gordon Wallace. So possession. Return as is normal in these circumstances, happily now. But honour so far, Billy, to Hearts. I would certainly think so, I, I, I think both from their appetite for the game, but more importantly, we knew there would be some sort of tactical alterations, and 
And really Hearts have come up with one. You know, Cameron's playing much more positively than you would normally expect to see him, and really they've troubled United so, so often and so much at the back. They haven't had that killer instinct, but uh, that may come in later stages. Mark Perry penalised for the challenge on Jim Hamilton in the air. Hamilton's very adept at these little flick-ons in the air, all these little headers into space for teammates. Zetterland turning that into a potentially dangerous area. Hearts up position again with Salvatore. This is Weir. Perry's clearance reaches Cameron. Good tackle by Pedersen. Dolan. McLaren. Salvatore quickly across there. Good defensive work in midfield by the Italian. The ricochet means a throw to Dundee United. Morris Malpass, one of only three survivors from the 1994 United Cup winning side, along with Andrew McLaren and Jim McAnally, who's had a little spell with Ray Rovers in between. That's McLaren. Salvatore again, a chase on here for Cameron. Presley takes the responsibility to go across there. That's excellent defending by Presley, supporting Pedersen. Overrun slightly by Pedersen, but Stephen Presley taking responsibility there, Billy. He does seem to have matured enormously. Well, that's right. He seems to have matured quite considerably there. I, I felt he held, kept his head, he held up the ball when he wanted to and, and played it to one of his teammates. But, you know, the, They've been under pressure, but at the moment they look as though they're adjusting to that pressure and have settled a lot more than they did in that nervous spell. This is Malpass. Now Olofsson. McLaren supported well here by Mark Perry. Good movement again offered by McLaren. This is promising for Dundee United. Too high for Winters. Here's Cameron with Pedersen. Locke playing it forward. Here's Cameron again. McCann against Malpass, one-on-one. -on -one. United getting defenders back very quickly, though, and Malpass using his experience to hold up McCann. Terrific defending by Malpass. No question of diving in, just holding up McCann until his teammates regrouped around him. It's a tremendous run by McCann, but look at the way that Morris Malpass doesn't allow him to move across onto his left foot, forces him down the wide position. He knows that he's not getting any support there, and at the end of the day, the, the attack peters out. Appears the handball against Eric Pedersen. Waved aside by the referee, a throw given to Hearts. Hearts haven't lost a goal in the last four matches. Two wins and two nil-nil draws, one of these at Ibrox, and they played particularly well headed on from Cameron here's Jim Hamilton showing lovely control Salvatore's little dinked ball won by Perry here's Fulton McManus has to go back here the attentions of Winters made that inevitable Perry did well again, he's had a very good season for United, Dolan got a touch on, that's McAnally, couldn't get it beyond Weir for Olofsson. United have changed again in defence, Perry's now on the right and Presley's moved to the left-hand side of, of Malpass. Perry perhaps a more natural right-back when required. And Pedersen is now in a man-marking role in Cameron, following him out, following him all over the field now and... Another interesting development in this battle of wits. Here's Dolan, forced to hurry the pass. McCann, very good play away from Pedersen, but not from Malpass. Well, Neil McCann's roving commission, certainly very effective so far in the match for Hearts. That's for Poynton. Well, McLaren gets a lot of credit there, Billy, because he did what he had to do and make that header very difficult. Yeah, he certainly backtracked to, to get to Poynton, but I think that uh, Poynton really has started the game well and he's, he's forced his personality onto McLaren and not the opposite way about. But 
an interesting aspect that, that United and Tom McLean has obviously singled out Ken, uh, Cameron is, uh, is so important in the put Peterson on the Markham there's Winters against McManus he's so quick and Rousset realised that that's good goalkeeping recognised the danger very early on the big French goalkeeper yeah, he's been a he's been a tremendous signing by Jim Jeffries, and he does so very well here because he's got to be positive there and he is. So with Hearts now playing effectively with a front three, United have gone to a back four. The back four is Perry, Malpass, Presley, and Pedersen. Here's Jamie Dolan. He has McLaren screaming for the ball in the near touchline. Mark Perry goes over laughing. It's played in by McLaren. Difficult one for McInally. Zetterlund's closed down instantly by Fulton. McPherson to Hamilton. Offside. No, offside given. Well, it looked at least five yards off the ball. I would honestly think the five yards might be an understatement, but he certainly was off. It looked offside to me, and the linesman didn't see it, certainly. Colin oh, Hardy from Glasgow is the assistant referee in the far side. Good header into midfield, Salvatore in too big a hurry, he had much more time than he realised, I think. Good backtracking there by Dolan, he wants the ball again. Good pass of Dolan, underrated in that department. The pass to McInally, releases Olofsson. That's a good ball across. Well, it came off the back of Poynton's head. He was very unlucky. Seemed to be judging the flight very well. He knew that McLaren wasn't going to get on the end of it. Superb ball in from the wide position, but look at a good defender by pointing. He, he, he knows where McLaren is, holds him off, keeps him the wrong side, and unlucky to concede the corner. McLaren's corner. Seth and got a touch on. And here's Malpass popping up in the box. Earning another corner kick. The tackle from Neil McCann. So Hart's pulling everyone back to defend here. The wrestling is on in the box uh, as the header is attempted by Winters. The free kick's given to Hearts on the six yard line. Bit of bumping and barging in there. Robbie Winters penalised. Well, Hearts were just a little bit careless. He didn't send anyone out to the corner and always paid the penalty. Fine tackle there by McAnally on McCann. Zetterland looking for Olsen who's flagged offside. Oh, the United supporters this time very unhappy. Well, no goal so far, but a fascinating battle out there. The players totally committed. The tactical manoeuvring is continuing relentlessly from the touchlines. There's Rousse now, we've got a lot of distance on this one. Wind assisted, Jim Hamilton timed it well. Calm play by Pedersen. Here's Winters. Showed too much of that to Weir. Presley was caught late there and a bit of damage inflicted on Gary Locke well that's a sight would have called from the cup final last May when he went down after about 10 minutes on that occasion was unable to get back up this time he's going to be alright I think and certainly hope that's the case you know I think it's just one of these things that he goes in to win it and face a penalty Dolan's free kick helped on there by Winters a very good little ball on there Olofsson was caught off balance this is McCann turned back by Perry Salvatore's return pass it's Poynton good anticipation shown there by Malpass this is Jamie Dolan couldn't gather that on the run That's good defending by Pedersen, what a fine player he is in that role. Zetterland missing out, Olofsson with a pass, here's Dolan. Oh, a little bit ambitious there, attempting a snapshot at goal. <laughs> Strong defending by Perry. Zetterland back to Presley. 
And here's McAnally. In a battle there with Locke. The result is a free kick to Hearts. And I think the patience of Hugh Dallas has been exhausted. It's the first booking of the match. Cumulative effect, I think, has been the real reason for this. So, first yellow card for Jim McAnally of Dundee United. You know, Gary Locke does well, he turns quickly, and I think Jim just a little bit frustrated at not getting to the ball, and I don't think he can have any real complaints about that. Well, Jim Jeffrey Sillin did have a complaint about it, he was jumping about in anger as he saw his captain go down under the tackle from McAnally, Gary Locke just back after that very lengthy spell out from the knee injury sustained in the cup final last May relishing every match now Locke resuming what looks to be a very promising career free kick, thumped in there by McManus, Dykstra's come all the way a little bit of adjustment there but it certainly was effective, the throw it not so good though, here's Presley McLaren had to get back to be onside Hearts held their defensive line very effectively there McLaren knew he was offside this is a typical Seb Dykstra move and it comes for everything it doesn't matter where it is in the box Almost drops it, but he's collected it and his first thought is to play upfield. McManus with a header. Presley nodding it down. Pedersen had to be quick and he was quick. The throw is given to Dundee United, much to the annoyance of the Hearts supporters. The last touch came from a Hearts player, said referee Dallas. Mal pass to Dolan, sharp passing by Dundee United. Well, the manager will certainly approve of that little spell of sharp one-touch play, but it's broken down. The interception made there by Pedersen. Poor ball, Winters caught on his heels. McManus now assessing the options. Cameron's first touch lets him down, it's with Zetterland. And now Presley, McLaren on to Perry, here's Winters, that's good play by United, McLaren, into space it goes for Jim McAnally, what a chance for United, well for Jim McAnally perhaps nosebleed territory, but what a brilliant move it was, magnificent sweeping move, look at the, the, the one touch there, and McLaren does so well, he sees Jim McAnally playing in it, plays the ball just at the right time, and Jim's in strange territory. Neil McCann against Mark Perry. Salvatore now has space to come forward. A shooting chance for Hearts. Sets it up for McPherson. Off the crossbar. Still United struggle to get the ball away. McPherson into win that. Pedersen wanted to run for a throw. And he succeeds against the challenge of Cameron, but Dave McPherson coming so close with that thundering drive. It's a good ball across them there, but he really strikes in. So unlucky not to, to, to finish with a goal there. There's the pass again, it's perfect, he doesn't have to hesitate, he takes any stride and oh, off the crossbar. Tremendous effort. Grant Murray has come on to replace the injured Gary Locke. More misfortune for the Hearts captain. It looks like straight replacement in terms of position for Grant Murray. What a big occasion this is for him. Well, it could have been 1-0 to Dundee United so easily had Jim McAnally kept his cool and it could so easily have been 1-0 to Hearts. McPherson shot. Well, such an evenly balanced match. So, Grant Murray for Gary Locke, in close change for Hearts. Jim Jeffries, though, showing a lot of...
confidence in the young man, bringing him into a cauldron like this. Malpass was standing some tough challenges there, but no free kick given as it throws to Hearts. McLaren helping it on, Poynton trying to control the ball under pressure. Poynton was caught there by Robbie Winters. Well, I think Manners is giving the assistant referee some stick down below us. Poynton's in some pain, but really the ball was there to be played that time. It certainly was a sore one, all right, but look at the way Winters coming across to try to block that. It's always dangerous. I think he was very lucky here because he definitely leaves his foot in and that's the kind of injury can that's the kind of tackle he can have a serious injury with and I think he's been a very lucky young man. Well if you're taken on that Robbie Winters tackle by referee Dallas was that he was genuinely trying to get the ball was there simply late but certainly could have inflicted a lot of damage on Poynton. It's a good kick out that by Dijkstra against the wind. Hearts of a throw. That's helped on by Hamilton. Malpass comes across to take charge again. He's very influential at the back, Morris Malpass, in organisational terms. Hearts of a corner. Very dangerous this, an in-swinger with the left foot, the wind hustling right down on top of Dijkstra also. Well, United to deal with this effectively, Winters now wants to do this for a run if he can, Poynton makes sure he can't. Good defending again by Poynton. Fulton's pass, Mal pass in the way. Pressure remains on the United defence. Murray now with the throw. Fulton lays it back. Strong tackle by Malpass. Murray still with a chance for the cross. Disappointing. He had plenty of time there. And Malpass went down in the tackle. There's McCann. Carry the ball out, I think. That's the word from the assistant referee. So United have a throw. Tony McLean looks on. He's made a number of minor alterations to the system as the first half has unfolded, but there may be more changes to the second half. There's Presley. Now Winters. Tackled well by Nick Person. Back now with Fulton. Trying to dance his way between defenders. The body check was by Pedersen. Free kick to Hearts in a very dangerous position into the closing stages now of the first half. Jim Jeffers, I'm sure, desperate to see his team go in front before the interval. It's a good opportunity, this. McCann whips the ball across. Much too close to Dijkstra, though. That's food and drink to the big keeper. Pedersen, equally comfortable on both flanks. Olofsson caught in his heels there also. That's Poynton towards Hamilton. Poynton again, Cameron's gone through the middle. to Hearts so Rousse will now take this free kick uh, 
Head flick on came from Hamilton. Dykstra now walks the ball out. United, I think, will be happier perhaps to hear the half time whistle, Billy, at 0 0. Well, I should think so. That certainly Hearts have had the bulk of the pressure in, in the first half, but there were signs uh, five or minutes or so ago that, that, that United had settled, and I think that once they get in the dressing room, Tom McLean will to get to grips with them, and I'm sure they'll have settled them down, but they, they look very secure at the back, and they started to show a positive threat up front. So a couple of minutes remaining in the first half, a bit of injury time to add, perhaps. That was an easy one for Rousset to, to half volley that ball. And out goes Dykstra. Hamill. McCann beats him to the ball. Dykstra was caught out there. McCann did very well indeed. That's a corner. Appeals for a penalty that came off McAnally. McCann was very quick indeed and sharp to win that from the keeper. Yeah, he, he does so very well here, Neil McCann. But the goalkeeper understandably can't make the challenge. Just a little bit rash with the, with the ball into the middle. There's McCann now with a corner kick, which is a very good one, it's beaten away by Dijkstra. Another corner kick. Well, the pressure remains. Hart pressing forward, no one's got out there. That's McCann lining up the shot, it's deflected away there by Dolan for another corner. The pressure now, relentless from Hearts towards half-time. David Weir's on the goalkeeper, right in the goal line. That's well won inside the box by Olofsson. Fine shot in! And another let-off, Murray's volley. Thundering in on Dijkstra. The rebound turned wide. And Dundee United have survived once again. It's an absolutely magnificent strike that the young player has just come on, sides it up brilliantly, but when the ball comes back, Neil McCann really has another chance here and snatches at it just a little bit, and really you'd be expecting him maybe to hit the target in that position, but all credit to the goalkeeper for, for, for being alert to, to save the first shot. Very important save by Dijkstra. Guards his goal so jealously, so keen on shutouts. He's had nine and 13 matches so far for Nundee United. Never lost more than a single goal in any match. It's an incredible record. So we're into stoppage time. Now, there could be quite a lot of this because a number of injuries adding up. Shell Olsen with a long throw for Dundee United. Presley's in the box. We are with the clearance. Pedersen was in the way. Salvatore has found space, immediately challenged by McAnally, that's good play. Malpass ensures no slip-ups there as the ball goes back to Dijkstra. Perry's pass, McLaren forward for Zetterlund, McLaren still available on the outside. Winters waits in the middle with Olofsson. It's McLaren now, and the header of Salvatore gets the ball away first time. This is Perry now, and Dolan. Patient play, he wasn't happy with McLaren's positioning. Here's Perry, he's done well staying forward. McLaren has to get that past the first defender, really. He's in the corner, but the one thing he had to do surely was get it past the first man. McLaren's corner kick this time. A bit of bumping and barging inside the area there as Presley went for that with Weir. The referee saw nothing amiss. So the half time whistle goes. It really has been a rousing first half. No goals, it can be said, but that really is down to some bad luck, bad finishing, and some excellent goalkeeping. Jim McAnally, perhaps the best chance of all when he found himself in the box right in front of Gilles Rousset. Then Dave McPherson, just a minute after that, struck the crossbar with a towering effort. David Weir also hit the post and Steve Dykes had that great save from Murray just before half time. It really has been terrific action. All it needs is a breakthrough at half time. Billy, Dundee United happier, I think. I think undoubtedly they'll be the happier side. They, they, they showed signs toward the end of being secure at the back and trying to hit uh, Hearts on the break, but 
Hearts will be disappointed because they, they really put an awful lot into their first half and didn't get much out of it. So, great action, terrific entertainment, and we're looking forward now to some goals, I think, in the second half. With that, back to Doogie in the studio. Thanks, Jock. Yes, the pace hardly dropped at all during that first 45 minutes. Terrific cup time, no goals as yet, though it's really perhaps the only thing it's like, though. Eamon, what's your thoughts at half-time? I think that, that Dundee United will be the happier side to get in there and, and get themselves a change of strip and a breath of fresh air, I think, because Hearts have really dominated the game for long spells, and I feel there's a lot of nullifying of various players going on. Pedersen on Cameron, obviously Tommy's identified that as a major Hearts threat. Poynton's doing very well against McLaren on the other side. He's really pushing him back into defensive area when sure. really McLaren's strength is getting forward the park. And I think it's telling that the, the main chances of the game or the main threats of the game have came from the two centre-halves in Hart's case and from uh, Grant Murray at right back and also from Jimmy McAnally. That to me is the little problem that, that Dundee United are having. Jimmy McAnally is struggling to get a position for himself. He's playing wide in the midfield. He's not the happiest there, so perhaps they might change that a little bit. Yeah, and yet, as we saw as recently as Tuesday night in Monaco, when you've dominated but you haven't scored, you're always a little bit worried, aren't you? Well, yes, I think so. And uh, I think Tommy will just really go along the same lines, perhaps with a little tactical change here and there. And, Again, Dundee United are sort of hitting on the counter-attack. Mm. Hearts, I think, are doing the right things. They're not getting sucked in too much. Um, and hopefully we'll see some goals in the second half. That's right. Well, is, is the wind a factor? It's obviously not great conditions for football out there, is it? It's not great conditions, no, but I think we've had a good cup tie. Mm. Uh, it's been really enjoyable. Um, difficult conditions to play in. But I think both teams in spells have passed the ball quite well. But there's been a lot of passion about the game. Both teams going at each other. And I do think that... Hearts have dominated it for most most part, and I feel that Poynton's really dominated McLaren down the left-hand side. I think that's a key mm. area for Hearts. He's really pushing McLaren back, and they're keeping Dundee United penned in, and McLaren really isn't getting forward. They got forward the last 10, 15 minutes or so, started to get himself forward, but Poynton's uh, an important role for Hearts, and he's doing really well. I feel that he, he is the main reason that uh, Hearts are dominating so much. Yeah, there certainly isn't much coming down that right-hand side from United's point of view. Let's take a look at some of the talking points in the first half. Chance came early on, in fact, for Hearts. A little bit of a confusion in the Dundee United defence here, Eamon. Morris Malpass got a little bit of a of a fankle, and Steve Fulton had really what was a very good chance. Yeah, the ball's getting played in here. I think it's, it's false to Steve Fulton, isn't it? He perhaps shouldn't have snatched it so much. He had more time than he thought, and he, he obviously gone for the far corner and uh, just didn't quite catch it cleanly. Mm. And this is uh, the Weir shot, uh, which uh, came uh, off the post. Did Dykstra get a touch here, Willie? I feel he definitely get a touch, yeah. Well, it was a great strike. I mean, he really catches it. Dykstra goes to his right-hand side. I feel as though he touched that one onto the post. It was a real good effort from Weir getting himself forward. They can hit them from that sort of a range. He catches it really well. The defence is backing off, off of him. Dykstra. That's a touch. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Good save. Onto the Very good save. And uh, as with Jock said in comedy, we're disappointed not to get the credit, but happy not to concede a corner, I suppose. And then we saw David McPherson, as we'll see in a moment, doing exactly the same thing. I mean, you made the point. It's the defenders that are perhaps getting the better chances, the more clear-cut chances. Well, I think the, the wind is gusting about, especially at that bottom end. Because mm. of the new stance here at Tynecastle, there's a real sort of breeze blowing in all different directions. Yeah. And in the uh, studio as well. In the studio. <laughs> <laughs> papers flying about. Yeah. And the ball is obviously flying a little bit quicker than it normally would, and uh, as a result, we've seen two or three good shots. Mm. Um, you know, and whether, whether Dundee United can take a little bit of advantage of it in the second half. Sometimes teams actually prefer playing against the wind than with the wind. I mean, I, I know people might sound that sounds daft, but if you're playing against the wind, the ball kind of holds up a little bit more for your strikers. So it'll be interesting to see if there is a little change in this half. We did have one big penalty claim during the first half, uh, which again involved Morris Malpass, uh, on Jim Hamilton. How did you see this one? I thought Hamilton does really well to get his body in there in front of Morris Malpass. I felt that uh, Morris is putting the tackle in from behind. I would say that probably 80% of referees would have given that one. Certainly I felt it was a good claim for a penalty. Um, really, when you're making a challenge inside the box, from the back, as a defender, you're taking a real chance. And Mappas had to put Hamilton under pressure. He didn't make contact with the ball. I think most referees would have given that, but yeah. not on this occasion. Again, it's maybe a softish one, I mean, no contact with the ball, certainly, but not an awful lot of contact with the player, really, was there? 
Or did he catch him? No, I, think, I, think, I think with my recent predictions and tips about penalty kicks, I should say, well, clear this one. Uh, if you look at the Clyde Kilmarnock game we discussed oh, We're not going to talk about that again. No. <laughs> I don't want to get you upset, Dougie, but... Uh, yeah, I thought it wasn't a penalty kick only because Hamilton wasn't actually going to get a touch on the ball or get a shot on the ball. If I felt he was about to have a shot on target yeah. and Morris Malpass came in with that type of tackle, definite penalty kick. But because he wasn't, I felt that made it a very, very dodgy decision either way. Let's move on and look at a couple of chances near half-time. Well, they two very clear-cut chances. Maybe, maybe the best chance of all, in fact, fell to Jimmy McAnally, of all people. What's he doing in the six-yard box? And really, should he have done better, I suppose we have to ask? Yeah, I would say we've had a lot of good efforts and a lot of good chances, but this was definitely the, the easiest of the chances. As a ball played right through to him. He doesn't really make contact with the ball. He's only got the goalkeeper to beat. I feel if he makes any kind of contact at all on that, catches it crisply, then it's a goal. That that was the easiest chance out of all the chances yeah, we saw. Just fell to the wrong player, really, I suppose, didn't it? Does, it? Yeah, he only scores against Aberdeen. <laughs> we, we spoke about that before, and yeah. Jim McInerney, the only team he scores against Aberdeen, yeah. he's not known for his goal scoring. Yeah. Sounds like a few unhappy memories there, really, from <laughs> what you were saying. <laughs> and then Dave McPherson coming through with the, the, the shot. I mean, he hit this one terrifically well, didn't he? It was a fantastic strike. I mean, it's really quite a difficult one. And I see if Dykstra dies, but there's no way he's getting there. And I think, again, I mentioned before, I think the wind took it a fair lick mm. down to that bottom goal. And really, what a terrific strike. And there, off the face of the crossbar. I mean, if that had hit the underside and went in, it would have been, you know, goal of the season stuff. Sure. I think Davey is capable of uh, goals like that. I mean, I've, I've seen him many occasions. He was always a man, a free kick was laid to the side, and he came in and had a hit at goals. And he scored a lot of goals that way because of that. Yeah, well, we have uh, no goals so far, so I wonder what the managers are thinking about it all. Hearts manager Jim Jeffries in particular, he's now talking to Rob McLean. Thank you, Dougie. All set for the second half, and Dundee United have made one significant alteration for the start of this period. They've brought on Ray McKinnon to play away in the left-hand side of midfield to replace Jim McAnally, who has been withdrawn. McKinnon has scored the winner the last time these two sides met here at Tyne Castle. So, full stop, we'll try again, if he wasn't satisfied. Some variation shown there by Jamie Dolan. That Murray going down under the challenge of Robbie Winters, who's not the favourite man among the Hearts supporters, after his challenge of Neil Pointer in the first half. And this cue there by Weir, Persons in behind him. Pedersen lofts it forward. Bit of head tennis here, and both sides, I'm sure, anxious to get the ball on the deck and start to pass it. Fouled by Presley on Hamilton. Well, it is very difficult for the defender when the forward really doesn't jump and just backs in. It's a free kick here for Steve Fulton to take for Hearts. Waiting for McPherson to arrive in the box. Dykstra has come to claim it. His very presence seems to dominate and he makes that look very easy. Well, he certainly prepared to come and take the ball. That one held up in the wind for him and it, really it was a bad free kick. So, Ray McKinnon's involvement. Well, a different kind of midfield player from Jim McAnally. McKinnon, the passer, very two-footed. McAnally, the grafter, the ball winner. What's the thinking, do you think, behind that, Willie? Billy? I think certainly a bit more mobility and a bit more, more craft. You know, I, as you mentioned, uh, Jim McAnally digs in there, but he wasn't doing it so successful this, this afternoon, so he's just going to change it, look for a more skillful player. Salvatore's pass, asking a lot of money. It's in the space for Cameron to chase. Presley gets there. Has to keep it simple. Not an occasion to be any more ambitious, I don't think. Grant Murray, 21 years old, and the clip from Bonnie Rig Rose. Decision goes United's way. Winters screening the ball from McPherson, that's Pedersen.
Back to head tennis again. Pushed by McCann and Malpass. Free kick to Dundee United. With this coming off his marker is McManus this time. Pass from Perry, aimed for McLaren. McLaren has a lingering look at his teammate there. Not entirely happy with the quality of the pass. Good play by McCann. Splendid tackle there by Zetterland. Here's Winters. Well, that was intended for Mark Perry, who was overlapping from the right back position for Dundee United. Time. The throw goes to Hearts. It's carried out by Dolan. McCann screening that from Malpass. That's fine play by the youngster. Twisting and turning. Presley did well. Stood up to him very well indeed, Presley. Yeah, and Tom McLean has made a, a subtle tactical change because he's gone to a, a straightforward back four with Perry playing the right back position, Pedersen coming in at left back there, and it's maybe just to accommodate the way Hearts had dominated the play in, in the first half. Zeppelin hustled out there by Salvatore. Hamilton to McCann is offside. Well, McCann couldn't have been more than a yard off there. There's Derek Horan from Kirkcaldy, the linesman or assistant referee. Yeah, United see it there. They're a bit slow in coming out, and really, really, McCann should should really have been looking across that line and ensured it wasn't offside. There's not a lot in it. I don't think he was, actually. I think he was onside there, Neil McCann. Salvatore had some treatment there, perhaps. Goal and Salvatore showing he's recovered quickly enough. Perry's interception. Here's Zetterlund. McLaren. Malpass. Oh, and Manis let that run, but Olofsson cashes in. Whipping it in. Winters. Held up well by Weir. That's Zetterlund. No United player there to take advantage. But it's the lapse in concentration there by Alan McManus. He's taken some stick from one or two of his teammates, which he's readily acknowledged. We are looking for McCann, the wind holding it up. Pedersen pushed over by Cameron. Steve Dykstra comes a long way out to become involved here. He wants to take this free kick. One attacking weapon, this with the wind behind. Just as Rousset was able to enjoy that in the first half. Now Dykstra has the chance. This is Perry. Dolan demands the ball inside. Winters holding it up there for Zetterland. Thought about a shot. McKinnon on to Pedersen. The driven ball always troublesome. Olofsson in a battle there with Weir, who wins out as he has won most of these battles so far in the match. United trying to settle and play some passage on the middle of the field. Zetterland and Dolan much more prominent now. McLaren to Dolan. Good reading of the play by McManus. It's Perry Brock, that's McLaren. Poynton, he's given it away. Well won by McManus for Salvatore. Poynton's having a superb match. Well, that's all that happens. Give him some praise. Kills it again by Salvatore. And then Aniga is suddenly about the other end of midfield. I think they may have had a rocket actually at half-time, Billy. Call on him, Zetterman in particular. Well, they're certainly much sharper to the ball. They're, they've given the Hearts players less time than they gave them in the first half. But I think the elements are having an effect as well. 
McKinnon's header rolls out there for a hard throw. So it's turned away there by Presley. So here's Grant Murray, 21 year old, with the throw. And headed down by Presley, that's Pedersen, McKinnon, Olofsson. An awkward bouncing ball this, McLaren challenging. Point and taking care, you see that left arm protected by strapping. Apparently that wrist was badly sprained in a landing in the first half. So an X-ray will be required in the game, we're told, which suggests there's just the possibility it's more serious than the hearts people hope. Here's Cameron. Oh, that's inside McKinnon for Murray, promising for hearts. Well, just a little bit overhit that cross from Murray. Once again, he had plenty of time to set himself because Colin Cameron's pass was an excellent one. It was a magnificent reverse pass by Cameron. And young Murray gets on to it well. Really, he should be putting a good ball into the middle from there, but just overhits it and nothing happens at the end. Good hell again by Poynton. Jim Hamilton going in late on Mark Perry, annoying some of the United supporters. Last fine play by Winters. Well, some carelessness again in defence by Hearts. McManus was caught out again by the pace and sharpness of Winters. Yeah, Alan McManus has been careless a couple of times this second half, and he's so careless here because all of a sudden Winters gets himself into good position, sets up a colleague for a shot. Doesn't hit the target, but nevertheless, that little bit careless is always disappointing in a defender. He was careful enough not to dive into a tackle out of frustration and commit a penalty kick, give away a penalty kick. Zetterlin now to Dolan. Off goes Winters. McManus this time standing in the ceremony, getting the ball launched into the main stand. Fourth match between the clubs this season. All won by a solitary goal. 2 1 nils. One to each side, then a 2 1 win here. In the league by Dundee United. Just about a month ago. Fulton trying to play it in. The break is on now for Dundee United. Good recovery by Fulton. Showing plenty of hunger for the fray. We are playing it forward. Murray matched this time by McKinnon. That's confident passing, overconfident passing. Jamie Dolan, the culprit there, giving away a very soft corner kick. Well, I think sometimes you should just knock the ball out of your defensive area and get out there and not, not allow the other team to cut themselves in there. That's well, the kind of softly conceded corner kick which often results in a goal. Not this time, no. Steve Dykstra seeing to that for Dundee United. Trying to give Jamie Dolan a chance to make amends. There's been some good uh, corner kicks by, by Hartson, but really, Dice has been able to deal with them quite confidently. This is Weir. Oh, he's done very well indeed. Pointed in strongly. Breaks for McKinnon. Held possession well, but what a disappointing pass. An apology offered from McKinnon. Well, if we're ensuring Alan McManus doesn't steal too many yards there, and that sharp whistle. Good turn by McCann. Cover provided by Pedersen. Midfield tending to be missed out frequently now. This is Zetterland. Misunderstanding there with McKinnon. Zetterland against uh, Salvatore. 
He's hardly thinking of the Scottish match. Good running by Cameron, a fine ball in. McLaren had to help in defence, but that's good play by Hearts. Colin Cameron's sharpness so effective there for Hearts. Pressure remains on here with a throw. Poynton. Offside flag is up. That was almost inevitable as the pass was aimed by Poynton for McCann. It would be a tight decision, but may well have been correct. Started looking for it as soon as the pass was played. You see Dykstra being told to go further back to take this free kick. Still trying to make his point, but well, it said there was out there, that's quite correct. Winters helps it on. Studied football at a premium now, especially in the middle of the field. Well, it's so intense in there that both sets of midfield players are fighting for for possession and the wind and the elements of I think the, the ferocity has increased and it's made life but that bit more difficult for the players. Presley showing his confidence in Sieb Dijkstra. Plenty of length in that, but couldn't keep the ball in play. I don't think Tommy McLean will be entirely happy with his team performance so far. Salvatore's header, that's Poulton. Always a bit of concern that a gust of wind holds the ball up as it goes towards the box. Now, Dijkstra really can't afford to let go fully here, or he could overshoot everyone. That's a huge kick right into the box. Murray's long pass, Salvatore on the end of it. Strong play again by Presley. This is Dolan. Dolan was caught late there by Murray. <laughs> I think that's a break for Dundee United. It was a bad pass by Dolan. Yeah, it's a, it's a long ball, it's going nowhere. Young Murray didn't really put in any physical attempt to hit him there, but uh, just a little bit rash. McKinnon now, the free kick. Came off a heart's head, that's a corner kick. Dave McPherson was the player challenging. Just past the hour mark now. The atmosphere of the match seems to be becoming even more tense all the time. Growing feeling that one goal could settle this. McLaren's corner. Rousse took it brilliantly. Mouth pass allowed to run on the edge of the box without a marker. The big keeper. Did the need for the hearts. The goalkeeper does really well because the ball's swinging away from the goals, but it comes very positively and takes it. In his head of this, Olofsson has had a quiet time of it against David Weir in the match so far. Zetterland. Perry. Holding off Coulton, but he's turned the ball out for the throw. Instructions coming from Jim Jeffries to Neil McCann at the moment from the touchline. I think he wants McCann on the left hand side now. Here's Hamilton. Presley takes charge there, clearly tells Morris Malpass he'll deal with that. Maturing into a fine young defender. They certainly they've been very positive inside their own area and they've forced uh, Hearts to chances to, to shoot them, hit them from outside the box. Jim McInally, an interesting spectator now after his first half efforts. Malpass with a pass, here's Olofsson chasing. Weir goes across to close him down. Well, that's a great cross by Olofsson. Zetterlund drives it in! Well, wasn't far away from Robbie Winters. That needs a poacher's instinct to finish it off. But Olofsson does so well with these crosses with both feet. Excellent left foot he has. Tremendous pace in, in the ball and 
really Zeta then does well to get such a strong strike on it, but there's little reaction from the, the, the United front players. McLaren had much more time than he knew there. Good ball from Fulton. Hamilton couldn't control it though. Here's Salvatore. Give it away. Sutherland sets off Winters. McPherson goes across to help his young defensive teammate Alan McManus. Well read by McPherson. So the throw will be taken by Mark Perry. There's McLaren. Now Dolan. Oh, what was in his mind there? He's given it straight back to Hearts. A chance to break now, suddenly. A space on the right for Cameron. Very unlucky. A lapse in control. Zetterlin trying to find Olofsson. He's managed it, not the orthodox way. Nowhere for Olofsson to go, they're going inside. Now pass with McCann. No McCann for Hearts. Presley again with a clearing header. You know, McCann's really got to get a better quality of ball in than that. Good position, chance to put it in the middle, but didn't take it. Good linking play between Olofsson and Winters. Here goes Olofsson. Look at the pace of the man! Well, perhaps could have kept on going there. He was at full tilt and was a really difficult player to stop at that point. Very positive run, you know. He's got McLaren on the outside of him, but just disregards him, watch the shot that goes himself. And didn't do badly. There's McLaren now on the right-hand side. Zetterlin trying to join Winters in the box. Back to Perry it comes. Good block by McManus, giving space for Colin Cameron. Cameron assessing all the options ahead. May try to go himself here. Now decides he needs some help. Gets it from Murray. United are now regrouped in defence though. Well, Cameron is showing a bit of indecision there when he had good possession and allowed United to recover defensively. Presley's pass is a good one. Here's Zetterland. Well, several times Zetterland and Dolan have played passes rather too quickly and inaccurately to lose momentum for United. The pace of the game has been tremendous in the second half. It's not been as skillful as it was in the first half. It's, it's almost like a basketball game. Each, type, each side gets a chance to go on the attack. Another long ball played by Dykstra. Winters is on the end of it. Plenty of United players forward in the box. One of them was McLaren. Cross wasn't good enough. Jim Jeffries, I think, perhaps a little bit concerned about the fact that Hearts have allowed United to come into the game much more now. Well, you can tell the management team is not happy. Billy Brown there too. That's well won by Zetterland. Zetterland again. Good control from Dolan. Couldn't find McLaren with a pass though. Poynton losing out to Perry. The free kick goes to United. Ferocious competitor, Neil Poynton. Splendid first half he had. McLaren's cross. Olofsson chasing there with Murray. Olofsson wanted that badly. He's on the free kick. He's such a determined character, Shell Olsen. Really enjoying himself up front for Dundee United, providing penetration, which is certainly lacking before he joined the club. Approaching a midway point in the second half as Ray McKinnon takes this free kick. Great ball, he scored! It's an own goal! It went in off McManus, but it was a terrific 
free kick by McKinnon. He caught hard snapping. The breakthrough at last. And it comes from Dundee United. He certainly tries to put the ball into that near post area. He manages to turn to get there ahead of the attackers. And unfortunately for him, he just puts it in his own goal. But, you know, it's a shame because the goalkeeper's come to take it. Perhaps just a, a little bit of mix up in, in who had to come for the ball there. But uh, it's a tragedy for Hart. Well, what an inventive free kick. I'm giving Ray McKinnon the benefit of the doubt there, Billy. I think he tried to deceive the keeper at the near post. Well, he certainly tried to put it into that near post, whether he or not he tried to score directly from the, the kick, or whether he just put it in there for his attackers to, to go and finish off, I don't know. But it certainly caused the uh, hearts all sorts of problems. One of the most two-footed players in the country, Ray McKinnon. This is McCann, hearts now coming back quickly. Dolan robs McCann. And Tommy McLean's already adjusting the tactics for Dundee United on there with instructions for his players. Well, we'll see this from behind the goal. Roussey looking for a cross across the face of his goal, stumbling slightly going for that. I think he would have got there, but for McManus. Zetterman's pass. Here's Olofsson again. Remember, he had the free kick from which the goal was scored. Back to Zetterman. That's a corner. But the ball gave of Olsen, the way he chased the lost cause, one possession, and just a rash tackle for the free kick, and that's why it's 1-0 to United. Yes, it was a little bit of an experience on behalf of uh, Grant Murray. He really didn't need to make the challenge, and Olsen forced him into it, and they took advantage of the free kick. McLaren's corner kick. Not a bad ball, that, to Presley. Didn't appear to have any real conviction about the challenge. Food for thought now on the Hearts bench, there's going to be changes made. Inevitably, John Robertson will come on. They have to go for broke now, Hearts, to save this. So often the saviour of Hearts, John Robertson. The up and under from Malpass. Here's Zetterland. Played forward there by Perry. Jamie Dolan with a cross. Headed away by Murray. Good marking of McKinnon. Free kick against United. Zettel on the culprit. Presley did well on McCann there. That's a fine pass by McKinnon. So is that from Dolan to Zettel. Well, United notoriously difficult to break down once they have a lead like this, Billy. Well, in fairness to the, the defence, the defence has been really solid and they've denied uh, Hearts any close-in chances. What good chances Hearts have had from outside, but they'll be, Hearts will be hoping that this one will make a difference to them. Neil Poynton goes off, he's played superbly, but that wrist injury, I think, is the main reason for his selection as the odd man out here to allow Robertson to come on to try to save this tie for Hearts. Jim Hamilton's moved to a wide left position now. Robertson through the middle with McCann. Interesting that, that McCann is being left up front. Hart's going for sharpness and pace in that area. Here's Hamilton in his new role. Going to a back four now, Hearts. They've got Weir, McPherson, McManus and Steve Fulton now across the back. By Sundolan on the chest of Olofsson, Winters makes the near post run. And that's who Olofsson was trying to pick out. Pedersen doing well against Robertson. Dolan's pass, very accurate. McLaren now with a chance to run at Fulton in that new position. McLaren goes again. Almost got the break of the ball. Perry inside, here's Dolan. Blocked there by McManus. Colin Cameron now across on the other side of the field. The Hearts left. Jim Hamilton. Well, it hasn't been the happiest of days so far for the young striker. Tommy McLean adjusting to what Hearts have done there. Very, very decisive in making changes. 
Jim McAnally here helping out also. He's on the coaching staff as well as playing. United's run remarkable. Eight straight wins in a draw in the last nine. Frustration now around the stadium for the Hearts supporters. Well, having dominated so much in the first half, I think the Hearts fans can't believe this. No, but certainly those, those fans are enjoying it. Then It's down to the, the, the switches at half-time. They've been much more positive in the second half, United. More secure at the back. The back four seems to have suited them, and they've got more possession in midfield, but they've been... They've had good running from Wallerson up front, and they've been prepared to knock balls into the corner for him to chase. Carelessness there by Winters. Strong play by Pearson. Here's Zetterland overhitting the ball, I think, on McLaren. He's not going to reach that. It'll be a goal kick to Hearts. Another change about to be made by Hearts. Bringing on their final substitute, who will be Gary Mackay. Having a discussion there with his manager about what alterations are appropriate out there. Skidding off the head of Malpass. Perry's in a fine match, gets the head of McCann. Here's McLaren. Off goes Olofsson again. He won't give this up, Olofsson. And McPherson realised that. It's good defending. Dan's control. He handed on there by Perry into the midfield area. David Weir comes forward. United funneling back to defend. Pedersen was lucky, the ball didn't carry for him there, but he got the break. Olofsson again has taken up great position, he's onside. His acres of space on the left here. Waits for support to arrive in the middle, looks for Winters. And Fulton has to concede the corner. Well, the near post run was made by Winters at real pace. Olofsson tried to pick him out. Well, again, Olofsson's doing that left hand side, and the ball has got to cross. You know, Olofsson does well down that left-hand side. He's done well in the second half. Knocked that ball in, but uh, Winters wasn't able to connect with it. McLaren's out swinger. Good header out. The counter-attack on the hearts. And Cameron halted calmly there by Ray McKinnon. United looking for a killer second here. Chance on for Winters in the turn. That's good tackling by McManus. Salvatore on. Here's McCann. Well, it's been a match full of interest right from the first kick of the ball. Nothing has changed. McCann's got a couple of breaks. It's good play. Good crossing position. Well, that's delightful play by Malpass. Cushioned the header down there for Zetterlund. Not content with simply a clearance. Dolan looking there for the run made by Olofsson. Downwind, that's very difficult to deliver. Hearts redouble their efforts. Can they save this tie? Zetterlund gets up well. Dolan is determined. Inside the final quarter of an hour now. The unlucky man who can see the on goal, Alan McManus, in possession. Very difficult to blame him, he was attacking a vicious free kick from McKinnon. Robertson set up for Cameron, well timed tackle by Presley. McLaren to Perry. That's good play again from United. Build up play, very effective again, Winters. Well, that was a very strange ball, bearing in mind the movement of Olofsson. It's a goal kick to Hearts. Anxious moments for Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown there. On the Hearts bench. Can make no more changes apart from Gary Mackay, and they've decided to withhold him for the moment. Presley gets up well. Winters is penalised for leaning into McManus. And now the change is going to be made by Hearts. No, the referee hasn't spotted that. It's going to be Mackay for Salvatore. Salvatore, perhaps his last involvement in the play here, setting up Grant Murray. 
The angle ball chased here by Dolan. Well, I gotta say I sympathise totally with John Robertson. I couldn't see anything wrong there except that Dolan tried to spin away and lost his footing. Well, look at this now. I cannot see anything wrong with Robertson there. And now the change is being made by Hearts. Gary Mackay, a long-serving player, now 33 years old, in the Tyne Castle since 1980. He replaces Stefano Salvatore, who's worked so hard in the middle of the field. Should be a direct replacement. Weir's powerful header. That's Perry. Zetterlin couldn't collect. This is McKinnon, supported immediately there by Pedersen. Olofsson, good first touch. Now Dolan, space on the right for McLaren to attack Fulton, now in the left-back position. Perry providing the extra man, the decoy man, that's turned away by Weir. He's gone out for the corner. Now United now trying to build on this lead. David Weir had no option there but to make that hurried clearance. Yeah. It's a ball into, into the middle again, and it's a difficult ball to contend with, and David Weir does well. United wait here for Ray McKinnon to go across. He can take this. One of the very few players in the country who can take corner kicks with both feet. Remember, the free kick which gave United yeah, the lead came from his right foot. This is going to be the corner with the left. And Hugh Dallas is going to take action against McKinnon for time-wasting. McKinnon explaining the ball was moving, that's why he had to hold things up. So it's a booking for McKinnon. Colin Hardy there was the man involved, checking carefully on the positioning of the ball. Well, it is a problem, there's no question how hard McKinnon is trying to solve it, I'm not sure. The time very much going United's way good corner kick well taken by Rusi under no pressure only one man upfield is Robertson Pedersen gets the ball first Zetterland and Pedersen together the Scandinavian influence so important to Dundee United that's Winters good effort in goes McKinnon oh, well played Rusi that's a very good piece of goalkeeping could so easily have done something rash there as McKinnon closed in. Weir's cross. Chance over Hamilton! The equaliser for Hearts! It came right out of the blue. Perhaps the poorest spell of the match for Hearts. And they found the net at last. The cross ball caused all the damage. Magnificent run by David Weir, he looks up, he knows the only ball's in at that back post. When it gets delivered in, and it's tight Brooklyn. I felt that uh, he might well have been offside there, but uh, he takes it so very well, doesn't he? But that's what Jim Hamilton came here to do, he came here to score goals, and he's been successful. And this one will be very important to him, but takes it so well, but looks especially offside to me. A very good finish indeed by Jim Hamilton, giving him his sixth goal in Hearts colours, and perhaps the most important so far. The question of offside remains, but the referee checked carefully with the linesman here, who kept his flag down. And now we have a terrific climax to the match in prospect. Listen to the noise now from the Hearts supporters. McKinnon played it in, they headed away by McManus. Olofsson. Here's Gary Mackay. Pedersen in the way. Possession for Hamilton. Looking now for Robertson. Mal past the covering player. Good little nick on by Winters. Here's Olofsson. Taking on McPherson ahead of him. Good clearance by Fulton. Took up good position inside the box. That's a good ball in. That's Perry. What a chance he had. If his first touch had been good. McKinnon did well. Inside is Dolan. 
Mo McLaren taking on Fulton. The cross aim for Olsen, it was just out of reach there. Good awareness by David Weir not to touch that and let it run. Well, let's check this, the goal, the header down. Contact was made at that point. Well, it's very close indeed. But the benefit of the doubt must go to the attacking side. That's the FIFA regulation. In these circumstances, the goal, I think, probably fair enough. You've got to applaud the, the decision, but you know, it's, it was on the edge of offside. But uh, if the directive is to go with the attacking team, then so be it. Here's Dolan. Winters needs support inside. Olison's out of reach. Hart's now pressing forward, looking for the winner. Well, they dominated so much in the first half, and then, strangely enough, scored at a point where United looked at things under control. Here's Robertson. Good tackle by Pedersen. He did well twice, actually, Pedersen there. Olison. A oh, strong, composed play. What a good signing he's been, Olofsson. Such a willing figure up front. Very, very pacey. Winters. Eased out of that by Gary Mackay. Good play. Fine pass for Hamilton. Not a bad ball, that by Hamilton. Entitled, I think, to expect a runner across the penalty box from Hearts. He gets himself in a good position, they obviously he's trying to either hit that at target, play it across the front of the goal, but I felt he should have just delayed for a, a second or two to let some support come up. Relief on the Hearts bench, and that equaliser. Olofsson touches it on. Nothing else for McPherson to do. Now, are we in for a winner before the end, or... Is it Tanadice for a replay? Winters layoff. Here's Ray McKinnon. In goes Dolan. Lost his bearings just at the last minute there. Mackay's pass. Presley was strong and committed in the tackle. Dolan's pass. McLaren seemed to be caught on his heels there. Alan well, McManus, perhaps the most relieved player of all in the Hearts ranks with that equaliser. Good play by Fulton. A clash in the far side, sees McCann go down. Pedersen. Presley turns it away. Hearts still in full cry here. Back it comes here to Gary Mackay into the box early, Hamilton comes to meet it, the ball's held up in the wind, that's Cameron playing it in, McKinnon. Weir's head up, McKinnon's given it away, back to Hamilton, this is Murray, and now Mackay. Fulton, Robertson backing in all the way, turned over the bar there by Pedersen, at Dundee you think that should have been a foul, Robertson may actually be asking for a penalty. But it's typical John Robertson players, he forces his body into players and makes himself very difficult to combat. So the corner kick will be taken by Neil McCann. Dykes has started to come, changed his mind. Another corner kick is given. So, a chance for Hearts again. Colin Cameron will take this inside the closing three minutes of this incredible tie. Well taken by Dykstra. So Dykstra makes this catch. Yeah, Dykstra's done well with these balls today. Swirling wind, difficult condition at the time, but he's taking the ball so well. The rain's come on, the wind is swirling down towards Gilles Rousset, but Hearts have taken some 
Great encouragement from that equalising goal. And now looking for the winner desperately. Free kick given for the foul on Mackay by McLaren. Well, just as United were happier to hear the half-time whistle, I suspect they may be happier to hear the final whistle here and take this tie back to Tannadice. David Weir's free kick. Headed away by Perry. Stole in that defence along with Stephen Presley for Dundee United. Possession rashly given away there. That's change going to be made here by... Dundee United Robbie Winters is being withdrawn the man coming on is Gary McSwiggan a natural goal scorer poacher McSwiggan so there's the change McSwiggan for Winters for the closing couple of minutes a long chase here for Olofsson McPherson knows that Olofsson could reach it in time so he Make sure Rusi gets the pass. That's good play from Hart's out of defence. McManus now striding forward. Space on the right for Murray. Cameron. Cameron against Pedersen. Been given space for the cross. Driven against Zetterman. There's no free kick given there. A penalty would have been as Rusi comes out of his area goes for a wonder here, that's good play again by Rousset relentless action right to the very end, Robertson guilty of a foul on Pedersen I think that looks one of guilt <laughs> no argument well he, he, he's playing to win the game and he's just going to take a little advantage if he can but a uh, bit theatrical mind you, the, the dive wasn't it a little jersey pull but certainly a dramatic dive Wrestling match between Olsen and Weir. The free kick goes to Hearts. In the final minutes, stoppage time looming. A little bit of that to add on. Here's McManus. McKinnon backtracking rapidly. Pedersen's head up. Weir helps it on to Robertson. Robertson leading the line. Here's Weir. Already one terrific ever in goal, David Weir, and showing amazing control for once at all. Losing it in the end to Presley, who's had an outstanding match for Dundee United. Presley and Perry and Malpass have been outstanding. Presley and Perry ever present in the side this season. <laughs> Dykstra's free kick aim for Olofsson. Weir wins it throw to Dundee United the whistle goes not much injury time added on honours even in the end Hearts dominating the first half Dundee United hitting back in the second and taking a lead through Alan McManus's own goal real tragedy for the young defender but then equaliser from Jim Hamilton keeping Hearts in the cup a replay to come at Tannadice and who would bet on that one Billy? No, probably at the end of the day, the, the draw is about the, the right result. Both teams had the opportunity to win the match, but uh, I think at the end of the day, probably a fair result is to, to play the second game. So, an entertaining match all the way through, and trolling right from the start in very difficult conditions. Certainly happier to see a, a ball hit the net a couple of times to just give a lift to the whole proceedings. But the man of the match award is going to be made here to Stephen Presley who had such a commanding game in the heart of that Dundee United defence. Billy, no arguments there. No, I wouldn't complain about that at all because he played very well, always looked composed, always looked assured and looks to be a much more mature player than we've seen in days gone past. So the final score at Tynecastle, a draw again, a replay to come, Hearts 1, Dundee United 1 and a terrific afternoon's entertainment. Back to you, Dougie. Thanks, Jock. Yes, I agree with you entirely. Terrific cup tie. We've thought those the sides will be very evenly matched, so it proved, and they'll have to replay, as you say, at Tannadice. That, incidentally, a week on Tuesday, that's the 25th of this month. So one each it finishes. Let's get a reaction from Willie Miller and Eamon Bannon. The United fans still singing Eamon's praises outside. It's really quite embarrassing. Willie, how did you think the 90 minutes went? I thought Hearts probably had the better chances over the 90 minutes, particularly 
in the first half. Second half, Dundee United came right back into the game. I thought an important factor was Ray McKinnon's uh, midfield performance in the second half came on. Gave United much more composure in that area because he didn't really command that area at all. Didn't have players in there that were capable of passing the ball. Felt McKinnon did that for them in the second half. That was, that was an important change yeah. at half time. Looked as though United were going to win the game, possibly add to their one goal lead, but then Hearts never say die attitude got that equaliser. Absolutely. I'll stop you there for a moment, Willie, because uh, Jim Jeffries, the Hearts manager, is with Rob McLean. <laughs> Jim, when United scored, did you think you'd blown it? Well, that was always a danger. You know, a goal out of nothing, a free kick. I think the young boy he gave away a stupid free kick there. He should have just kept, closed them down. And then it's a good ball played in, which I think maybe got a wee deflection. I couldn't see, just end up the back of net. And it might be typical how Dundee United's luck's been going a wee bit. You know, they took a pound and then break away, maybe come a wee bit more with the wind into the second half. But, you know, great for the players to battle back. And I, I don't think anybody can say that we, we didn't deserve to at least uh, get a draw of it. And I thought maybe we were a better side over the whole 90 minutes. So in the end, having had so much of the game, you're actually relieved to get uh, Jim Hamilton's equaliser and get the replay? Yeah, well, always. I mean, you know, down a cup tie, you're always pleased to get another chance. And as I say, we, last year we went to some difficult places. So, you know, maybe we're going up to Tannadice, then Dean will come out a wee bit more. And that'll maybe get spaces in behind again. So today they just defended and tried to on the break. But we knew that. So maybe up there the, the onus will be on them and don't count that side of it yet. OK, Jim, thanks very much. Okay. I thought so, Jim Jeffries. Jim thought United sat in and almost came for the draw, Eamon. Is that fair? I don't think it's fair comment in the second half. I think the first half, uh, it probably is fair comment. I mean, I said before the game that I think the formation that United played and the way they were going to play suited them better than with Hearts, and I think that's the way it turned out. Hearts had to chop and change their team around about an awful lot. Uh, Gary Locke going off injured didn't help. Pointing going off injured didn't help. And to me, interestingly, the very first thing that Tommy McLean did was put a strength, which is Olufsen, onto a perceived weakness, right. which was Grant Murray right back. Let, let's see the first goal, Eamon. Uh, Alan McManus scored it, but it was Ray McKinnon's goal, really, wasn't it? It was, and it was Grant Murray got caught by Olufsen, and here it, he whips it in, and... I mean, big, uh, big chalky, I mean, he really... He's holding his head in his hands there, and... It's one of those swirling balls in which he either should head away cleanly or just leave for the goalkeeper but perhaps the goalkeeper didn't shout to him you know he maybe he felt he had to go for it well that's what we need to know I suppose or did yeah. Rousse shout because it did certainly look as if he would have collected it had McManus not got in ahead of him possibly a language problem there <laughs> with the Frenchman and the Scotsman but uh, oh, I think he knows the Scots would leave it all right <laughs> what would you reckon Willie I reckon it's a good ball in McKinnon great ball into the near post very difficult ball to uh, to defend in there you really got to have to be positive in yeah. a different way from that you've got to be positive and make sure you get it behind the goal but a good ball and I think you've got to give McKinnon credit for the way he plays that ball into the near post yeah and yet United almost looked as if they were going to get a second goal on the break because Hearts obviously then had to go looking for the equaliser but they got it but a hint of offside about it perhaps Definitely, yeah. I think uh, Hearts can look at that one. They can look at the penalty in the first half and say, well, we're a bit unlucky. And then, as it always happens, it seems to even itself up, if not in the game throughout the season, certainly evened itself up yeah. with uh, Let, the Let's take a look season. at that Hearts goal then, because um, we, we sort of froze it during the match and it, it's, it's very, very close, actually, isn't it? It is very close. So you put yourself in the, the linesman's uh, position and he's got to make the decision. It's not an easy decision to make. Um, we, we've got the cameras here, we can slow it down, we can watch it time and time again, but I do think that Hart's got the break this time. I felt as though it was marginally, very marginally offside, but uh, you know, as I say, these things even themselves up, they, uh, they didn't get the penalty. And on this occasion, I felt they got the break here, perhaps the one that made up for the penalty didn't get. That to me is just marginally offside. You can argue about it, there's not much in it, but I felt they got the decision, they got the break. Hamilton, give him credit, he finishes it really well, sticks it away. Yeah, Good yeah. goal. As, as we know, we, we now give the advantage to the, the attacking side in those situ uh, situations. Would you go along with that as a directive, Eamon? Yes, I think it's important that that does happen. I mean, you've got to remember the linesman is running the line in front of a few thousand heart supporters and to, to, to not give the decision is a brave one, you know. But I think, I mean, he'll look at, I mean, the linesman will look at these things as well. He'll look tonight and he'll he'll be convinced that he gave the right decision. Sure. Uh, it was that close, so why not give it, give it to the benefit of the attacking side? It's important that that happens in football because 
goals seem to be drying up at an alarming rate, so why not encourage them? I would go along with that. And it did give us perhaps the right results. I mean, the United fans won't agree they were one up, but I think over the piece a draw is a pretty fair result, isn't it? I think it was a fair result over the piece. Um, I think the pendulum now swings in United's favour a little bit, going up to Dundee. Obviously, Hearts have to travel up there. In a kind of funny sort of way, Tactically, I think it might suit Hearts a little bit better because United now have to do the attacking, if you like, or more of the attacking. But over the piece, yes, fair. It won nothing United. They certainly looked like they were going to score a second goal. They controlled the game, they passed the ball about. Hearts came in to make a, good, a couple of good substitutions. John Robertson, Gary Mackay, a couple of old stagers, old campaigners. And that seemed to just be the spark they needed and suddenly got their equaliser. Yeah, would you go along with that, Willie, that United perhaps now favourite simply because they've got home advantage in the replay? Well, they've got to handle it differently. The pressure is now swung, perhaps, on United. They've got to go in front of their own fans. Their own fans will think, perhaps, that the job has been done. The fact that they've got a replay, they take them to their home uh, turf. It won't be that easy. I think these sides are very evenly matched. I think it's going to be a very difficult game for United. They're going to have to concentrate at the back. They look very solid at the mm. back. Not scoring too many goals, but I think over the piece are very evenly balanced. And I th still think it can go anyway. I would go along entirely with that. Thanks, Willie. And uh, we'll hopefully hear from Tommy McLean before the end of the programme. It has been a terrific cup tie, but it finishes all square. The replay, remember, at Tannadice a week on Tuesday. Now uh, we could have merited the win, you know, and in the second half I thought we were the ones uh, looking like the win, as I say, played havoc. You know, the first half obviously Hearts had a couple of chances for longer range. Uh, second half, I thought we dictated the, the game, scored a good goal, comfortable on the ball, but the uh, lapse of concentration cost us dearly there at the end. Were you disappointed with the showing in the first half? Hearts had a fair bit of the half. Well, I think the win was the thing. You know, it's a case that really in the early part of the game it was always going to be competitive and was we was kicking against the wind. They had the initiative or played in the main an hour half of the part, but uh, the second half, as I say, I thought it was uh, the opposite. And you're disappointed that you couldn't hold out having got the opening goal? You're using these words, hold out. We weren't holding out, we were comfortable on it. It was a lapse in concentration. I thought we were looking like uh, scoring the second goal, to be fair. So the pair have to meet again. That will be at Tannadice a week on Tuesday, the 25th, with the winners, of course, home to Motherwell at Hamilton Ackies. Tomorrow night, it's Hibs or Celtic, with Rangers awaiting the winners. That's it for this afternoon then. Terrific cup tie here at Tyne Castle, but it finishes all square at one apiece. From all of us here, thanks for joining us. Bye for now.